Hey everybody and welcome back to another edition of Beers with Boyer and BJ. We are coming to you from the what top floor, top floor of the top floor of the Fountain Mortgage, the beautiful Fountain Mortgage headquarters here in Prairie Village, Kansas. I'm Dan Boyer with Fountain Mortgage. This is BJ Urstry with Remax Elite. And uh, I think we've got a, I'm excited because we're not doing an IPA today. I love IPAs, <laughs> but I'm, I'm excited about what we're uh, talking about today. So what is it? We have got, we stopped off at, um, oh God, the Brew Lab. <laughs> we stopped over at the Brew Lab. It's at uh, 7925 uh, Marty in downtown uh, Overland, uh, Overland Park. And uh, talked with Kevin. Basically, back in 2013, him and three friends were sitting around drinking beer and uh, kind of hatched a, a great idea, which I kind of thought was funny because that's how this came about. Yeah. Um, but uh, we are drinking the Flint Hills Hoppy Wheat. It is a Pilsner wheat. Uh, it's supposed to have fruity notes and a nutty undertone. I have no idea exactly, but it's excellent. It really is. It has a uh, has a bit of a resemblance to like a Boulevard wheat. Yeah, but uh, a little little different flavor to it. Yeah, a little more. I guess that fruity flavor, like you're talking about, it's pretty good. I like it. That's an easy drinking. That is. That's a anyway. So I, 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 it's a good place to go. It's a cool facility, and uh, they've got a lot of beers to choose from. It's definitely worth stopping by, and supposedly, the people at the bar told me the food is fantastic. Cool. So what else are we talking? So what are we talking about today? Well, I, you and I talked last night. Uh, I had a client uh, that popped up, and she had reached out to me through uh, the internet and asked for me to give her a call about buying a house. And between her contacting me and, re and me reaching out to her, she ended up talking to her daughter, who had been a lender a while back. She called her daughter up and said, hey, I'm called this guy, we're thinking we're buying a house. And the daughter told her, do not buy a house right now because you're gonna overpay like crazy. And in four to five years, this market is gonna tank and you're gonna be upside down on your house and they're gonna come foreclose on you and you're gonna lose everything. So it took about 35 minutes for me to kind of explain the situation between 2008 and 2009, the whole craziness that went through and today, and I did tell her that her daughter was half right. The houses are going really pretty quickly and they're, they are going over asking price sure. when they're fresh off the market. But there were a lot of reasons why her daughter was not really correct on her assessment that it was going so to the daughter, So the daughter felt like there was going to be a housing bubble or a, house, yes. a, a, a market bust basically yes. and all the prices were going to come crashing. Because it was, just a, it was just a rinse, wash, repeat and we were back into it again. And I explained to her that it was not that case that uh, this one has been caused due to a lack of housing inventory, not by... Well, you and I have talked a lot about this. Yep. And I think, you know, I think what we want to kind of talk about today is that neither one of us and, and you know, we, we don't, this isn't just our own opinion. This is based on some research that we've been doing, but we both don't feel like there's going to be any kind of a, heart, a housing correction or a, a market bust. Right. You know, barring any type of craziness yes. in the world, that yeah. type of thing. But so what I went through and I kind of put down. So I talked. To, I want to talk about some of the differences between 2008, when we did have a housing market crash, when the prices came tumbling yep. down, about what 30 percent, or yep. you know, it if was not pretty, more. Yeah, or if not more, depending on where and where we're at today. Yep. And so you talked about the first one, which is inventory. So if you go back to 2000, you know, the mid 2000s before the yep. market correction, there was a surplus of inventory. Uh, builders were building homes as fast as they could. Uh, they had, you know, they had a, they, they had as much money available to them to build homes as they wanted. And today's market is completely the opposite. There is a lack of inventory, right? Yeah. So builders don't have the lines of credit available to them that they had back then. So they have to be more selective in how many homes they can build. And quite honestly, they can't build them as fast. Uh, the housing production right now is nearly half of what it was back in 2008 on the new on the new side, uh, which obviously makes a shortage of the pre pre-existing homes because, you know, to, to get a pre-existing home, somebody's got to build a new home, yep. right? Um, you know, the other thing that, um, you know, the, the prices, so pricing is a big deal. Everybody says, oh, there was a huge run up in pricing before 2008, just like we've got going on right now. And that's correct, but it was artificially being driven up. Um, prices are being driven up right now because of lack of lack of inventory, that supply and demand issue. Yep. When there's not much supply and there's a high demand, which we have right now, that raises up the prices. Um, you know, the other thing that I think, and in, in this one uh, is personal to me being on the lending side, but one of the things that really caused a lot of this was the predatory lending or bad lending that was Absolutely. happening back, yeah. back in the day. Uh, as an example, um, you know, they had loans, believe it or not, that were what you call a negative amortization loan. 
So what does that mean? It means it's an interest only loan. So the only thing you're paying is interest. You're not ever paying towards the principal. And on some months, if you didn't want to, you didn't even have to pay all the interest. So most people, as they make house payments, there's a portion that goes to principal and a portion yep. that goes to interest. Well, on these, it was all interest. And as a matter of fact, the balance went up. It wasn't going down. So the value of your house goes down, your balance goes up. That's, that's just set up for disaster. I think the other thing too is the subprime lending that was happening. Um, pretty much anybody could get a loan back then. You know, you didn't have to have documentation. You didn't have to have job time. You didn't have to have some, most cases money down. Yeah. It was, it was too easy to get a loan and pretty much led to a, a disaster waiting to happen. Um, you know, the thing to think of, uh, think about now too, is they were using a lot of adjustable rate mortgages back then. Um, right now, I think they, I, I read a statistic said only about 4% of all mortgages on the market right now are adjustable rate versus a fixed rate. Mm. So a lot of people were having a scenario where they got into a house payment of $1,200 a month. The adjustment period came and all of a sudden their house payment, you know, skyrocketed. 16, 18, 16, 1800 yeah. and, and couldn't afford it. Yep. So, you know, there again, that was bad lenders putting them into mortgages that they probably yep. shouldn't have been putting them into. So, um, you know, the, the, the other thing I want to talk about is is the buyer profiles. Um, so obviously we've had a lot of correction in the lending world, which has led to a different buyer profile mm -hmm. for mortgages. What I mean by that is the average credit score is much higher than it was back in 2008. I think it was like, what, it was like the low to mid 600s um, back then. And I think we we're talking- We're over 700. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of that also, you know, that has to do with requirements. They're just not lending as freely yeah. to uh, the lower credit scores. You know, the other portion of that is cash. People have more cash in the bank today than they had back then. So when an emergency does come up, it's not so dire and they're not, you know, losing their home based on that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I, I think that, you know, um, is, is equity in the home. So that cash turns into equity. Uh, so even if there were some type of a correction, you know, not many people are going to see that house drop yeah. past their equity line in their home and, and have the short sales and foreclosures that we had back then. So, and, and the last thing I will say about it, um, you know, if you if you think about what's happening right now, so people may or may not know this, but when we went into COVID, they put on a uh, deferment program for mortgages to where you could literally quit paying your home mortgage for a while if you were out of work. And there's been a lot of talk about how that was going to how that was going to work, right? Well, the reality is that program's over yeah. and people are starting to have to make their mortgage payments again. And the great news is most people are doing it. Yeah. Most, most of the people are making, they've either gone back to just making the payment they had originally. A lot of people have refinanced their home with the current interest rates, have gotten a lower house payment and started making it again. Um, well, and, there, and there are a, a, a few foreclosures out there, but the, the percentage of the total loans out yeah. there, uh, even the percentage of the ones that were in deferment is very low, which well, is good. Even what I'm seeing is people who did go in deferment, I mean, I, the banks, I, I, the banks have been extremely, I guess, nice in a, in a, in a term that they were, I think they've got a knee jerk reaction that they didn't want to shove people into a bad situation. And so the banks are working with, and what I'm getting from other clients is when they did go on deferment, they, the banks are working with, it. you know, what, you know, what's, and so they're not, you know, people were worried all through that, that, oh my gosh, there's going to be a big balloon payment whenever it comes back, yeah. if you can't pay it. I mean, it may have happened They're somewhere. restructuring their but, yeah, loans or doing anything they can with, do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, I, I was really impressed and, and proud with uh, a lot of the banks that I, cause I didn't, we didn't know what was going to happen. And there was always these rumors going. And so I was happy to see that uh, that did not go sideways on us. I agree. And I think that, I think there will be obviously some foreclosures that'll hit the market, but I think it's going to be a fraction I of what we saw. No, I, I agree. <clears throat> it, uh, I think for the most part, I was afraid that people were going to during their time of when they were during that program of deferment, that they would just use that money and just get out of the habit of make, saving that money to the side. It seems like for the most part, the minute that came up, people were kind of prepped for it yep. and they were ready to start hitting the ground running right when it happened. You know, the reality too is we did have a lot of foreclosures back then, which also continued to drive prices down. Yeah. So it was kind of a snowballing effect yep. as the foreclosures happened, it drove the prices down. I don't feel like we're going to see that. No, I don't either. And on a, on a just a quick ending on this, uh, the nice thing about uh, the market that we're going into right now is back in uh, March, February, March, we were looking at inventory of anywhere from 1,800 to, to 1,900, sometimes 2,000 uh, total homes on the market in the entire Kansas City metropolitan area. And a balanced market is about nine to 10,000. And we are looking at right now, we were up to 4,200 
a couple months ago and we're, we're down a little bit to 38. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing a lot of more homes getting rehabbed by investors and also just thanks to you guys with these new with some of these programs where they're able to keep the home they've got, buy another one. Mm -hmm. And the risk of, in fact, in the, in the past, when you had a bridge loan or whatever, you know, um, that they were afraid they'd be sitting on this house and be making multiple payments for the next six, eight months. Those houses are selling. So it's helping those houses come on the market, which balances the inventory. Plus <coughs> the builders are coming up with more houses and we've got the, the investors. And so it's really well, helping the market. I think we're gonna have a really good, strong spring market. I think we will. And I think the good news is everybody that I'm, that I'm reading is forecasting additional price growth anywhere from 4%, I've seen as high as 13%. Yep. Uh, we had like 19% growth in prices on housing. I don't think we're going to see 13% no, I, anymore. I think, you know, I think we'll see that come down to the normal four, three, four, five percent. And I'm, I'm not seeing, uh, and it still happens sometimes on houses, but I'm not seeing anymore the, you're walking through and you realize that they're going to get eight, 10, 12 offers on this house mm -hmm. that are crazy. You're, I'm seeing now my buyers are up against maybe two, three offers, right. not the eight to 12 things we were seeing even yep. before. And so it's the the craziness is not there. So people aren't just crazy over bidding to drive. So four buyers want to go back on the market, whether it's you know coming up in a few months or even in the spring market, it's going to be a great market. And uh, I think the moral of the story is don't be afraid of the housing yep. market. Rates are still low. They, the are starting, is, they are starting to move up a little bit, So, but the rates are still so low. the sky's not falling. The sky's not falling. It's a good time to buy a house. and. Uh, I, you know, I, I would be in the housing market right now if I was looking for a home, so. I can sell you one. Cool. Thanks for everything. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us again. Make it down to uh, the Brew Lab on uh, Marty in Overland Park. Have Cheers a Merry everybody. Christmas, Merry everybody. Merry Christmas. Find that fire's hot. <laughs>